So this is the KE4 Max from the Golfworks. We're going to take a look at it today. Let's get started. Hey golfers, Dave from Fit to You Golf. Today I'm going to review the new KE4 Max iron from the Golfworks. If there's a little twist here to the review, usually if you watch my videos, you know that if I don't have access to the whole set of clubs, I uh, choose the seven iron and evaluate that. In this case, I'm doing the five iron. And the reason for that is that I bought a five iron and a four iron head to um, transition into a blended set of TS1 irons. Now I love the TS1 head since the first time I saw it. In fact, it was a prototype. Britt Lindsay brought uh, that and the TS2 down to a, uh, a class that I was taking at the Golf Works and showed us, and, and I, I love the looks of it. But it's a player's design. It's, it's a compact head. It's got a thin top line, a thin sole. You know, you really you have to be a good ball striker to play it. But I've been taking lessons and, um, you know, I have a healthy hip now and uh, my ball striking has improved. And so I'm confident that I can play a set of TS1's six through pitching wedge. Uh, if you look at the four iron and the five iron in the TS1, you know, they look like your proverbial butter, butter knife. Like they're thin and not exactly confidence inspiring for, you know, an amateur mid handicap golfer. So I wanted something that had um, more forgiveness in the longer irons and the K4 Max came out and I thought this is perfect. The lofts blend pretty nicely with the TS1 and it has some adjustability with the weight port, which I'll get into. So um, I built a blended set. And before I get into the build, let's talk about uh, the looks and the technology in this iron. Now, as far as I know, every KE4 iron, at, at least as far as back as I can remember, has had at least one, if not two, adjustable weights uh, built into the design, which is terrific for, um, for feel and for swing weighting. Uh, this one uh, continues with that tradition, but it's very innovative. The screw is towards the toe and inserted in a diagonal into the, the body of the iron. Now, I think um, not only is this, is this nice looking, it hides the screw so you don't see it, um, but I suspect it has some functionality as well in terms of placing it out by the toe, you move the center of gravity, it puts more weight where most of us need it uh, in terms of a toe miss. And so it's, it, it, it's a really nice innovation. And, um, and again, the way that's placed, is it, it, it's not obtrusive, you, you don't see it in the club. In terms of the rest of the design, this is a nice looking iron. Um, I don't think it's gonna win any design awards, but that's kind of a good thing. Um, I think it's pleasing to most. It's, it's mainly a chrome finish uh, on, the, on the sole and, and the, the back frame of the club. And then the, the back cavity is a matte uh, chrome finish. The Maltby emblem and the KE4 lettering are uh, slightly raised, but a little subdued in, in, in their, their coloring, which I think is really nice. So it's a, it's a really pleasing design. Now, one of the things I want to uh, point out is the in, in 2D pictures, so in, in print or on the website, and probably when I show it to you here in the video, two-dimensional, um, is uh, the sole width is distorted. It looks chunkier and wider than it really is. So I'm going to put up a couple pictures comparing the 5 iron sole width to the STI 2, which I think is probably the competitor for this club. But I think uh, if you're looking at this, you might be also looking at that. And you'll see from the pictures that really there's no difference in the sole width. Um, when, you, when you look at them this way, uh, they're, they're very similar. Yeah, sure, the, the KE4 Max uh, head is a little bit longer. That's for forgiveness, but that's what it's supposed to be in a Super Game Improvement Club. But the sole width really is not overly wide. And the reason that it, it looks wide in print is this line right here. This, this line right here. I'll put up a picture. You're going to see it a lot more clearly. When you look at the, uh, the pictures of the iron, it looks like the sole goes past that 
that line. Um, but in actuality, the, the soul ends with that line, right? So the soul ends here, and this is actually where the soul kind of wraps around the back. So this part after the line is not really part of the soul. It's just really part of the back of the club. And I suspect it's there to help, you know, hide the weight port and provide some structure there. But um, don't be deceived. This is not like a super chunky, wide sole club. It's it's wide, um, but wide in the in the realm of you know game game improvement. So in terms of the build, uh, I paired uh, the five iron with a, a UST Mamiya um, recoil shaft, the 680 um, F4, which is a stiff flex. This is an 82 gram shaft. Um, I cut it at 38 and an eighth inches. I put a 50 gram grip on it. At that, uh, at that length, the swing weight is D1. Uh, by the way, I should add that the, um, the USD um, recoils, at least the, the 680s, frequency a little bit softer. Um, so this uh, CPM'd right at the 5.2. So it's, you know, it's more in the regular range. So I'll put up uh, some swings. I took these swings at uh, the Scranton Golf Center um, where I belong. Uh, that's where I practice, that's where I take lessons. Uh, I usually don't uh, record swings indoors, so you're not really gonna get an accurate um, sense of the sound uh, of the club, uh, you know, of course, when it hits the ball, but I'll try to talk about that a little bit um, as I put the swings up. So this is a nice feeling club. I mean, it's a cast club. Um, no one's going to be surprised and think this, oh my God, it's forged. But when you hit the middle of, uh, of the club face, it really feels great. You, you get feedback if you've missed the center, uh, but it's not punishing. And uh, there's still forgiveness there. Okay, so let me uh, put up the data. I collected this data. Um, using the flight scope that was available there and E6 software. And uh, here's what I got. I was swinging the club on average at 82 miles an hour, getting ball speeds of 114, which is a smash factor of 1.39. I was launching this at 19 degrees, spinning at 4,900, and carrying at 166 yards. Just to give you some comparison, on this particular day, I was uh, hitting my six iron, carrying my six iron, 155 yards. So this provided a really uh, nice gap, uh, and, and you know, right where I'd want it in terms of um, yardage. I will mention that the uh, four iron is the easiest four iron I've ever hit. Uh, I, 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 I'm fortunate enough to play around with with this set of clubs, a late, you know, February round, kind of a surprise, and um, I was confident enough in it that I could hit the four iron off the tee on some uh, short par fours. Uh, it's the only four iron that I've been able to hit 200 yards, and uh, I'm I'm really happy with that. So good good long irons uh, in the KE4 Max. So in terms of a summary, pros and cons, rating uh, for pros, I'm going to say absolutely performance. Uh, I'm going to say the looks are a pro. It's a nice looking club. The innovation with that, that screw port, uh, that, the port there for this weighted screw, uh, I, I think is, is really clever the way they designed that. And, and it does add some versatility in terms of changing the weight for feel and, and swing weighting. Um, the price is, is also a pro. I think these are around $30 a head, which is really very reasonable. Um, for any club, but certainly one that has some added technology in it. The only con uh, I'm going to say is uh, bendability. Um, even before I played uh, the set, I wanted to bend the, the five iron to be a little weaker, um, to blend better with the TS1 lofts, and uh, I could I could not get that thing to budge. Um, the only thing that compares to me are uh, some of the ping uh, G lines of, of irons, just you know, really, really hard. Now I could have put uh, a short hosel bending bar on it, and I probably could have bent it with with that uh, that tool. But I also could have broken it with that tool. 
So um, I'm going to say that if you're thinking about this club and you want the loft or lie adjusted, spend the extra money, have the golf works do that before they ship them out to you. Uh, you'll save yourself some, uh, some choice words and some sore muscles. But overall, uh, I got to give this a, a solid birdie rating. It might even be an eagle. I mean, I think as I keep playing with, with these long irons, um, I'll have a better sense. And of course, I wasn't able to evaluate the rest of the, the line. So I think a birdie is a fair rating, but I still highly recommend them. I think if you're looking at the STI-2, this, this is a contender um, in terms of what you might be considering. Okay, so uh, I hope you like the review. Uh, if you have questions, post them. Uh, comments, love to hear them. Um, subscribe if you haven't. In the meantime, um, I'll end this uh, the usual way. Get out there, play some golf, and stay positive.